Hi there, and welcome to a new vlog from Sonodyne called Ask the Trainer, where we try to answer some of your frequently asked questions. My name is Tom, and I work at our UK training centre in Plymouth. During one of our recent free webinar sessions, a Bose from Nigeria asked a question about multipath and how it affects Sonodyne acoustic positioning systems. Now, this was a really good question, and one I didn't have time to answer in the webinar. But it is one of our frequently asked questions, so this is the perfect uh, place to answer it. I share my screen. Uh, in order to look at this topic, we're going to basically identify what multipath is. We're going to discuss what types of multipath there are out there and how they affect various acoustic systems. Uh, and more importantly, how does Sonodyne overcome those effects? Multipath is a, a physical phenomenon that affects all acoustic systems, not just Sonodyne. It's a law of physics thing. In order to really look at what it is, it's good to give you an over overview of how our acoustic positioning systems work in principle. So here we have our ultra short baseline system range of two with a transceiver on the left and our 6G beacon on the right that we're positioning. The transceiver will send an acoustic inter interrogation into the water. The beacon will hear that interrogation, wait what's known as a turnaround time, an artificial delay, before sending back an acoustic response. The Ranger 2 system will use that time of flight acoustic data minus that turnaround time to derive the range of the, of the beacon and therefore its position. We can do that for a single beacon, as you see on the screen, and also for multiple beacons. Uh, and for multiple beacons, we'll send a common interrogation out into the water. They're all programmed to listen out for that common interrogation. They will wait their turnaround times, send individual responses back, identifying themselves so the system can to, to derive the position for all of the beacons simultaneously. And in good conditions, those signals will get back unimpeded to the vessel to allow it to derive those positions precisely. However, we do, all acoustic systems suffer, suffer from this thing called multipath, which in its simplest term is a reflection, an echo of one of those signals bouncing off something hard or something reflective like the sea surface or the seabed or a structure or something else down in the water column. So in this example, I've got the seabed uh, and the beacon is responding and there's an echo of that response bouncing, bouncing off and they both detected back at the transceiver. So the yellow one is the prime, that's the, the first one. And then the red echo bouncing off the seabed gives a, basically a, a mirror image of that, uh, of that beacon, giving it what we know as a multipath error. The system could, in certain circumstances, mistake that to be the true location of the beacon. This is multipath in its simplistic terms. Now, lesser quality systems or older systems use tone-based signals. This is an analog signal, a classic sine wave uh, with a certain frequency that's looking for. In the beacon or in the transceiver, there's a replica of the signal it's looking to detect. And as the prime signal comes through the water column, it compares that to the replica it has in, in its filter. Uh, and as the peaks and troughs of the signal match, you get this correlation building up uh, above the detection threshold, and then it dies down as the signal carries on going past. So anything above the detection threshold is basically above that background noise and therefore classifies it as a potential uh, signal. And then there's a second threshold known as authentication. If it's above that, it confirms it is a signal it's looking for. And it uses this threshold to determine the timing and therefore the range and position of that beacon. The problem with tone-based signals is they are prone to interference and that multipath, an echo of that beacon, of that signal overlaying with the prime can effectively interfere with itself. So you end up with the peaks and troughs kind of cancelling each other out in the same way that noise cancelling headphones work. So you end up with no signal at all, or very, or virtually no signal, or not enough to get above the detection threshold, therefore destroying the signal. So tone-based or uh, analogue systems are highly prone to multipath. Now Sonodyne get round this because for the last 20 years we've been innovating our acoustic signals. And we're now, we were the first to bring digital wideband signals into the acoustic realm. Now, with wideband signals, we modulate the signal slightly differently. So the sine, the sine wave is gone. It's now a different looking, uh, looking signal wave altogether because in it is embedded a digital code. So we're looking for the match for the digital code. So as that code perfectly matches, you get this really precise timing spike, this correlation spike. Benefits that, that highly precise timing spike is our precision of our tracking gets much better. It's much easier to detect, it's much, uh, it's much more reliable. So uh, our wideband acoustic positioning system is, you know, a, 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 by order of magnitude, better than an analog tone based system. And with, uh, when you have a multi-pass signal overlaying with that prime, what you get instead of 
cancelling each other out, what you get is two distinct spikes of detection. One is the prime, the other is the multipath. And our software is programmed to basically cancel out or reject the multipath signal because it arrives later, because it's gone to the scenic boot. But what if the system misses that prime signal? Well, then you're still in that process of, uh, of the simple multipath issue. And one reason for that could be if you're tracking multiple beacons is they are equidistant from the transceiver. So your signals are arriving back at the transceiver at exactly the same time. So you may catch one, but the second you won't hear because it's being overlaid by the first. So therefore the system could detect the multipath or the echo of that and mistakenly position it there in the multipath position. And that's relatively easy to overcome again. Uh, as I said before, when we send out a common interrogation, each beacon waits their turnaround times. Now that turnaround time is programmable and you can program it whilst the beacon is sub C. So you simply go into the beacons table, select the turnaround time, change it to a different one, bearing in mind that the software will also warn you if those signals are getting too close to each other. So you get a warning, go in there, change it, it's two or three clicks of the mouse, click apply, it programs the beacon sub C, and then as you carry on tracking, you get signals arriving back at different times at the transceiver from that simultaneous interrogation. Problem solved. Now this advanced technology helps us deal with simple multipath, but it has introduced a new and interesting phenomenon, which we call early multipath. As you saw in the earlier slides, the prime signal is usually the first to arrive, and the multipath signal arrives after it because it's taken like the scenic route, it's bounced off something. But we do now see situations where we get a multipath signal arriving ahead of the prime. Now it hasn't invented time travel. The reason for that is that, uh, and this is how it looks by the way, you get a beacon in the wrong position earlier or before we expect it to be. The reason for that is that your signal, your original one of those signals is still bouncing around in the water column and has been mistaken for a later one. I'll give you an example. We interrogate the beacon, uh, it replies, oops, let's start again. We interrogate the beacon, it replies, an echo of that reply is then heading back off something as the next interrogation comes out. So we get an artificial intercept point, it, cancels, it basically works out its turnaround time and then gives us a mistaken uh, position error like that. I'll play that again because it perhaps quite quick. Interrogation, reply, echo of the same reply heading back as the next interrogation comes out. So we get a, an intercept, uh, intercept point there, take off the turnaround time error and there is your multipath error. Relatively again, easy to fix. All you do is turn down the power. Everyone thinks you have to have everything on high power. If you're in shallow water or a highly reverberant scenario, turn the power down and it means those echoes are going to be much quieter and therefore lower, uh, harder to detect and therefore less likely to, uh, to, to cause that problem. The other thing you can do if you don't want to touch the power and gains, and that's fine, is just slow down the update rate. The default update rate in Ranger 2 is two seconds. It can go faster, but if, you want it, if you're getting problems with this early multipath, slow it down a little bit. Slow it down three, four seconds, and then a click apply, reprograms the beacon, reprograms everything, and problem disappears altogether because your echoes have dissipated and long since gone as the next interrogation comes out. Now, the other reason why you might have early multipath is because someone else is using a Sonodyne system within the same audible range of your acoustic positioning system that you're using, and you're both on the same channel. The default for common interrogations in terms of channels is. 1600. Now if another vessel is also on the default channel of 1600 and, and, and can be detected by your system, they will be interrogating your system inadvertently. So what happens is as your interrogation comes in, uh, into the water, the, their reply from their early, early interrogation is heading back to you, giving you an, an early multipath error. I'll just try to show that again. So the other vessel is interrogating all of its beacons, yours responds, and then your system detects that response earlier than it should do because it's already halfway back to your, your vessel as you, as you send interrogation out. Gives you a far early multipath error like you see here. Uh, the other thing that it can be obvious when you're tracking, uh, if someone else is using your channel, is a really erratic two-way travel time display, which is something we always uh, recommend people have open when they're tracking on, on any acoustic positioning system. See sort of signals like this, you should have nice straight lines. If you've got something like this, something is definitely awry. Something, somebody else is likely to be using your channel. Simply change the channel. Go into your beacons table, uh, whether it's Ranger 2 
Fusion 2, Fusion 1, whatever it is, change the common interrogation channel, uh, click apply, it reprograms the beacons and everything goes back to normal. Quite easily done, all right? That summarizes what multipath is and how it can be overcome relatively easily in Sonodyne systems. I hope, Bose, that has answered your question. If anybody has any further questions or anything you want to ask uh, us to answer in this forum, then contact us through our website, uh, sonodyne.com, or send us a message on LinkedIn, Sonodyne Training on LinkedIn, or in our Twitter account, at Sonodyne, at Train Sonodyne, or even email us at training at Sonodyne. We'd love to hear your questions, and hopefully you'll feature in the next Ask the Trainer session. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon.